Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Big, big. Check it, check it, check it. It's Unique Hustle. It's your boy, ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, outstanding, most innovative, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Not not in my dad wall going. Stop playing. <laughs> I want y'all to go like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. I mean, our Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, YouTube, you name it, we're on it. Um, even Threads. If y'all ain't touched Threads yet, y'all need to go check us out over there. But if you want to see all our full-length interviews, check out our YouTube membership. That's where you can see all our full-length interviews right before he started chopping it up and clipping it up and dicing it up. All right? Thank me. Later. Wow. Was that necessary? Yep. Check it, man. Hey, man. Listen, man. We got a very special guest in here today. He don't need no introduction. He come by way of Jackson, Mississippi. This cat right here, man, produce hits with Glorilla. This cat right here, man, got a new project coming out with my guy, Gator Man. It's not a game. This guy right here also rock out with Smoke D, who is another cat that I rock with. We about to get all the way into it, man. A-Ray is in the building. Appreciate it. You ain't never had no introduction like that. That hoe went so hard. Yeah, Let's be hard. real. That hoe went hard, boy. Yo, you like, this nigga can interview. I ain't never been on no platform where a nigga interview like this. Say, nigga, let's get it. Let's get to it, man. My wife, she can real laid back. That's what helped the show because I'm crazy. Yeah. I can tell. <laughs> yeah, when I talked to your ass earlier, you spooked my ass a little bit. Like, Hold on, let me get right with bro. Right here, hood nigga. <laughs> nah, man, I'm a good nigga, man. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Okay, yeah. Uh, it's going down, man. So what you got for him today? So were you born and raised here in Dallas? No. no. I Where? just gave the intro. You ain't heard nothing. I said, no, I, I, said I do it again. Jackson, Mississippi. <laughs> I went there, then. Well, uh, Jackson, actually, when I took, remember I took you down there, you had to stop out of these people play. Let me explain to you what Jackson is. What a water messed up at. Yeah, yeah, for real. Yeah, let me explain to you what Jackson is. Yeah. What well, my boy, uh, that big. What's big, wrong with the water? That water messed up lead, like in Flint. It's, it's full of lead. Like, uh, well, see, like the the recent blizzard that happened with the last winter, it really messed up our like pipelines and stuff like that. So like, uh, we just had a real bad boil water alert when the when the summer started coming, like when the heat started coming back. So like, our water just been as bad as it could ever be. Like, you, you don't need to drink. So it, this just started with. happening. You can't take a shower in it. No. So how uh, they take a shower? Like like they boil the water. Oh, you like got to boil it. Boil, we on a boil water alert. Like probably. So you got to boil right water now. for everything. Like, it, we like Flint right now. Like our water just that bad. It's poisonous. Like it's poisonous. You don't want to take a bath and take a shower in it. Like. There's people in the city that's got good water. Like some people that got their stuff filtrated and probably got better systems put up, set up for their house and stuff like that. But a lot of people ain't really just. Do you know how much of a hassle it probably is to boil that much water to take a bath? For a minute, like when it first was happening, we didn't even have no water. Like, I don't know if you've seen Finesse Two Time brought water, uh, Deion Sanders brought water. Right. Like, it was a lot of people. For how long? Water. Uh, it was for some months, like two, three months. Wow. It was wow. for a while. And it's still not gotten any better. Could you go up to Vicksburg and, and just hang out up there and do pretty good? Vicksburg, that's crazy you said Vicksburg. Uh, Vicksburg is, is, is cool. It's not as bad as Jackson, but I mean, country water, it's the same thing. Same thing. You got to boil it up there, too. Mm hmm. Wow, the water. That's what I thought about because I drove when I came through there. It was raining. I said, God, let bless them with some rain because the water <laughs> definitely is messed up here. That's why yeah. you raining down on them here in Jackson. <laughs> and I came through downtown and we went to that cigar shop. Remember, and I went in and gave everybody cards. But, you know, the thing is, man, like you growing up down in Jackson, like um, I got to do this part now. Like like were you your parents or you, you from a single parent or uh, are your mother and father still together? Foster child. What? Yeah, I, I was born in the foster system. Yeah, my uh, my mama, she 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 couldn't take care of me. Like, I don't I don't got the chance to speak to her, and we had to talk about it. But like, you know, the story that I was gave that she gave me up. But <clears throat> when I got the chance to meet her, like, she just was she was doing two colleges, and you know, she was raped and had me. She couldn't. How do was it. she? Uh, she was like nineteen. She was in college when she got raped. She was going to uh Spelman. She wow. was in, yeah. I was born in Georgia. Wow. wow. So yeah. basically, she, and so from a young age, when you went into the foster care, did you go from different parent homes or did you have a home that you. Yeah, I was, I was a ward of the state, so I was switching homes. Like, like 
if it wasn't really working out or like well like you know uh they do it like payment like okay if you take a child and you getting a certain amount for a month but you got kids in school and stuff like that already you can't enroll this child and stuff like that we have to send you somewhere else or oh. or like if you get in trouble or or you you just the child you talk to you got a good relationship with your social worker you say i, I, don't, I ain't feeling these people they'll, they'll move you so that was really my case a lot because I don't know. I, I kind of just didn't understand the home living situation. So sh once they told me I could say this and they'll move me, I just kept doing it. Like so, that's how you ended up where you ended up. <clears throat> well, nah, it was really a lot deeper than that. Like uh, when when I was like nine or ten, uh, my sister was living in Georgia. I didn't know I had a sister. This is a biological sister. Mm -hmm. So she and, had, and she ended up finding me through her social worker. How far apart in age are y'all? So she gave you your sister up to a year. Yeah. So did she get raped again? I don't know what happened. Uh, I, I, that's that's a story I'll have to have with my mama. But but I know she ended up having my sister like ten months after me. And she gave her up. Mm hmm. Uh, but uh, the situation with my sister. Oh, my sister. She's so smart. Like she uh, she just got real comfortable with her social worker and, and you know just ask questions like you know do I got family? Do I have you know other siblings and uh her social worker found me and uh the home that she was staying in was an all girls home but they allowed me and her to stay together mm. wow <clears throat> but so you were in the home with all girls mm -hmm. you <laughs> how old were you hell oh, no <laughs> i was i was like 10. okay yeah, but still like 10. Nigga, you you play hide and seek <laughs> nah. i was uh, i couldn't get out the, i couldn't like the house rules for me i couldn't leave out the room when i was in the house Okay, yeah, because you're born yeah, all yeah. girls. All the girls could be out. They, they was on you they was on you. How did you feel? How did you feel? Uh, How did you feel? But he was happy it because was, he was, was really. Shh, shh, I messed this up for me. I was young, so I wasn't thinking about no six and yeah. nothing like this. Y'all didn't play hide and seek. Nah, I went on that. You got back on that again. Like, I, I was just going through too much. Like it, it wasn't, it wasn't nothing like that it was presented to me. I, but you were just happy to be with your you're sister. Happy to be with your sister. I really didn't really understand what was going on. Like, you didn't know that was your sister. Nah, I knew. I knew, but it was, you gotta understand, it was fresh. Like, we just meet each other, so mm -hmm. she got a whole nother world going on. And I just come in and I'm big brother. You her big brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, and well, she found you. <clears throat> yeah, she did. And, and she was happy, but I was confused. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I was lost. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, at first, I thought I was by myself at first. But then, you know, me and her was together for a couple of years. But was that then, situation better than where they took you from? Before my sister? Yeah. It was the same. It was the same? Okay. So it was it the same. Like, we was in the hood. Like, our foster home was in the hood. You gotta understand, we black. Like, mm -hmm. they ain't finna just throw us in the best home situation. It was like we, Antoine Fisher. We in the hood. Damn. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, for a minute, like, me and my sister, we got the chance to bond and get close. And they would let her in my room, but couldn't nobody else come in my mm -hmm. room. But uh, that's actually how I ended up starting making beats, though. Really? When yeah, like when when my sister found me and they put me in that in that house, it was a computer in that room that I was sleeping in, and uh, I don't know if it was the lady that owned the house, ex boyfriend computer or something like that, but it was Fruit Loose on the computer, the the program to make the beat. Wow! And like when I opened it, it had the little demo beat on there, and that's how I started making beats. Like that's how I started just getting into it. Wow! Like, I, I couldn't leave the room, so. When I had that computer, I was out of playing games or making beats. But you came out of the room to eat, to do different, to do some stuff. I really didn't even do that. How like, long was you in this room, my brother? Uh, uh, two years? Yeah, because I had got in trouble. When I turned 11, uh, I, I, I started getting to age, you know, kids want to bully and all that crap. You fight. I got into a fight. You driving them. But it was school. really like this, this situation was about my sister. <clears throat> what to happened? It. Nah, she was dating this boy. So like she was dating a boy and She ain't even old enough. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We was young, so like I'm not understanding this stuff, but this she with the boy, you know what I'm saying? And I'm doing me, I'm quiet, going to class, going coming home, staying in the room, and out of nowhere she just come back to the crib crying. <clears throat> and, and you know, the boy up the street at the park, you know what I'm saying? She tell me she go up to give him a hug and a kiss. He didn't shoot her off, called her B-word, all that good crap. So that's my first time ever seeing my sister cry. Oh, yeah. So you went down there. Straight to the park. And told that nigga, hey, nigga, you didn't even say nothing. My social worker put me out. Like, I, yeah, I walked straight to the park, didn't say nothing to nobody. And just, by, just, just hit that nigga. Him. Fop, fop, fop. Or just shit out this man. And uh, Drug him. Well, see, like, his people came. Like, you got to think, that was his neighborhood. Damn, so you got drug. 
I ain't dragged the nigga, but I beat the Somebody, shit out the man. Okay, but then them niggas came out they, there. I'm telling you. Yeah, his, his people came out there for me, and, and yeah, it was a big ass fight. But you by yourself? That, yeah, I was. Yeah. You hold your own? Yeah, I'm out. I've been in a fight like that. <laughs> I was at the club. But that's 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 what got me separated from my sister. Like that mm, day. Wow. And, and how old was you at that point? Eleven. Eleven. Yeah, Eleven. But, that, but the reason why was because you got to think the lady was already taking a risk on me staying at the all girl. Yeah. yeah. I wasn't supposed to be staying there. So I got into a fight. The police came. They asking where do you stay, and I did that. Other lady was like, "You can't stay here no more." So where did you go after that? Uh, she moved me to Arizona. Damn. That far from New Zealand. You and your sister kept kept was in you contact. Was you in Where was you at? Phones. Mississippi. Huh? Where was you at when they moved you? I was in Georgia. And they took you and sent you all the way to Arizona. Yep. Damn. Uh, I was in Maricopa, Maricopa, Arizona. But the crazy thing about this, this, like this, gonna be the craziest shit I've ever heard. I met three of my other brothers when I moved to Arizona. What? From your yeah. mama? From my mama. Your mama so had three more kids? Three younger? Yeah, younger, younger. Younger than us. Was she having mind a child you, I, every like, year? Like, okay, mind you, it was me, then my sister. Yeah. By the time my sister was born, I was two. Mm -hmm. But at 11, I got a seven year old brother, a five year old brother. I mean, uh, at 11, I mean, a 10 year old brother, a five year old brother, and a. No, 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 I'm sorry, my bad. I got an 11 year old brother, a nine year old brother, and a five year old brother. So them and she gave up them. all of these kids to the state. And you seen them in Arizona? I met them. I, all of them. I found out how I found out was the middle one. The the I mean the baby one. Uh, his name was my daddy's name, Caleb Ontario Smith. So you dad, know your dad? I know his name. I don't know him like that. So hold on, but hold on. But if she was And he looked no, like me. The no, baby, but the hold baby on. looked he, like you. All the kids like by him or just some of them? Uh, no, just, but just him. The baby boy was by him. No, okay. but hold on. The, the thing is that I don't understand. Your mama was raped by this man hey, and me. had you. Mm -hmm. And had then now sister. she go back to this man somewhere down the line. And my sister. And your sister had the same daddy. And then years down the so line. So she ended up being with her rapist. See, like it is. It, it's, it's hard to say. Like, or was it really rape? I, th I think. I think. They when whenever they had contact, she was how she explained to me she was in fear. So you know, so whenever she had contact, that same fear came back. Like whenever he got a hold of her, it was just like she was scared to say no to him. You know what I'm saying? So you know, I and she had a baby every time. Yeah, was she so quiet? I, huh? Was she a quiet woman? Yeah, she didn't never talk she, much, did she? My mama, she really a sweet lady. Like now that I done met her and all this, she like, don't she, talk, do she? She a smart, super smart woman. She didn't graduate from did two she universities. Did she graduate? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she graduated from two universities. She traveled the world. She do insurance, all type of stuff. She got five kids. That she didn't take no response. Did she have she, any that she kept? It, it really like well with me and my sister. How she explained it, like like I said, I'm, I'm grown. I got my own child. Yeah, so for like sure. I kind of I kind of don't look at it as she was being responsible. I feel like she made a choice that best for you. I, yeah, like she would rather me be somewhere where the where the government can for sure take care of me versus her attempting while being in school and not being able to be there and going to jail, you know, potentially being able to have, having to go to jail as a woman take care of a child by herself. You know what well, I'm saying? Where is her mama, daddy, family members? Uh, from what I was told by my social worker, they didn't want to deal with me. You know what I'm saying? So like my grandma and them on my mama's side, they didn't want nothing to do with me. But I ended up meeting my, my real grandma Mama my black? Side. Huh? Your mama black? Yeah. You okay. met your real grandma on your daddy's side? Mm -hmm. And, and do you like them? They, they yeah, me and my grandma, we cool. She still rock with you? Mm -hmm, we cool. You met your daddy? Uh, I, I met him before, yeah. How did you meet your mama? You never told us how you met your how mama. I met my mama. Uh, how I met my mama was, I, I, I got grown. I, uh, how I moved, old grown? Like 19. Okay. I, uh, I had moved out here to Dallas. Okay. And uh, when I moved out here to Dallas, she was staying at Carrollton. Oh, okay. So like, um, she found me on Facebook. She knew you was hers. Yeah, like she she had been watching me my whole life. She knew she, she. just, you know, went didn't want to say anything until yeah. you got older. <clears throat> until I got grown, yeah. So like, she asked me for the chance to be able to explain herself. So I gave it to her. So you know, were you angry at the time before she, before you spoke to her for the first time? Be. I didn't know how to be like. It's not even that I didn't know this lady or nothing like that. I just couldn't feel no type of way. Like, I don't even know you like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody else that did what they did, they they did their part to get me here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just feel like that's just a part of life. Like, 
Wow. Somebody had to take care of me. You know what I'm saying? Well, I got to. Man, I can't wait to hear your new project. You got a lot to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. So Damn. when she's finally told you. Um, you don't rap, do you? Yeah, I do. You rapping on the project, right? With so I know you do production, too. Yeah. Yeah, I can't I, wait I produce, to hear you. I want to hear your music, man, because that, that's wow. Like, I, yeah. I, you done blew me away. I was not expecting to talk about that on this segment of Boss Talk 101. I'm going to go into all the stories about the music. Boy, this is going to hit me with a blow today. <laughs> so how long were you apart from your sister? Because I know you say you um, lost contact, but how did you regain contact? I was contact? apart from my sister for like five years. How did you regain contact? Uh, She started getting in trouble. She started getting in trouble. So, like... It's just crazy how it happened. I, uh, around the time I turned 14, uh, like I said, I was getting in trouble moving around. So when I got from Arizona, I got in trouble and moved to Big Springs, Texas. When I moved to Big Springs, Texas, I got in trouble. I moved to Memphis, Tennessee. And after that, uh, a situation happened with somebody that was related to me in Memphis. How you know they related? You don't even know who your folks is, boy. Nah, because they told me. Like, they told me who my daddy was. Like, Oh, these niggas knew your they daddy? They knew me by looking at my face. They could say, y'all, you, you look, look just, just you like, look that that like my daddy. Yeah. Okay. Like, I, I look that much like my, my son looked like my daddy. Your dad, <laughs> was your daddy going to Spelman too with your mama at the nah, time? He he wasn't in no school. He was okay. just out here being Thug on the stone or whatever the fuck. Thug okay. The nigga was thugging out here, wasn't he? Some I don't know, but but uh but like uh yeah, my son, he looked just like my dad. So you were saying about your sister, how you got oh, back in contact how, with how we ended up getting back to each other. I said she she started getting in trouble. So uh when I got to Mississippi it was through like I said, the situation that happened with somebody that was related to me. My it was a funeral we had to go to and that's how I ended up meeting my grandma. Oh. And she ended up um, just like kind of taking over from there, like because well, she's taking care of just you. like her son. Yeah. And how old were you at that time? Uh, I was fifteen. Okay, so you got out of the system at fifteen and the no, stayed with her. I was in the system until I was like nineteen. Till nineteen. Mm -hmm. So even although you your grandmother is there, so she, she could got guardianship of me, but right. like I was still in the system. I was still a ward uh, of any really? state. Any state that I went to, I was a ward of the state. How come? Because if you have a relative that's now say I'm gonna be your guardian, I can I'm take. A, I'm a government baby, so like if somebody was to cover me, they got to get paid for it. So I'm I, I'm still a, a ward of the state. Like she could give me back to. The state mm. and somebody else could come get that chick. Mm. So she was getting that chick. Yeah, after at fifteen. She but I mean, I, I I can't trip. I don't know nothing about yeah. you know yeah. take care of, at the time. I ain't know nothing about take care of no child. So that money that they gave her, she needed it. She right. took care of you. Yeah. Yeah. Which I know that's hard, yeah. bro. But I, I just see how things work out, man. I, I know that God is real. You was okay. God took care of you because you was too young to take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. But and that's here. how your sister came in because you were staying with your grandma and she ended up coming there too. Well, see, like my grandma, uh, grandma didn't like your sister. My, did you? No, no. It, well, your they sister did. Bad they as hell, did have her. I know. They they have women don't they like each other. Grandmama don't did. like her ass. <laughs> she come over. She fast. She won't sit down. She talking to them little boys. See, my grandma, she was really overprotective, though. Like, my sister, she was on point. Like, my sister, she was on point. So she like, had been through stuff already, huh? My grandma had, too. Damn. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, my grandma was just, she was just doing stuff early. Like, you know, trying to prevent my sister from, but my sister so ahead of her time. Like, she wasn't even trying to be on that. She, it's just the press was just kind of made them split up. So whenever you were there with your grandma, because your grandma is your daddy's mom, mom mm -hmm. um, is that where you met your daddy for nah. the first time? No. Nah. Uh he, he kinda just threw himself in. Like he he, he pulled he up on you. Yeah, he came he came. Well uh, it, it was your first words together? Because you like you got an attitude about yeah. your daddy. Nah. But see, really like your your daddy and you don't get along good. See my daddy he just hurt my sister on some shit. Like And that's shit. why you feel bad. You you protective over your sister. It's like it's just it's just certain now that I got a son, it's just certain stuff you just don't do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I just would never, I would never put no child that I take care of now over the children that I left behind. I still would give my apologies. I still would, you know what I'm saying, be humble to these children because to be honest with you, you, you ain't taking care of a child that's yours. They over you. They over you. You a coward. You know what I'm saying? Like, they over you. They stand over you. They already better than you. So how could you have some, some how could you have something hateful or something bad to say to children you put in this world? Yeah, and then you you feel like he didn't really wasn't there for him to be even talking to him. He hurt my sister, man. 
Wow. And that's it. See, he don't play like about about mm -hmm. his sister. And that's the only girl, right? Because you said all these other brothers. It's but a lot of, it's a, this man. He, how many? I mean, how many kids do you end up finding out? How many kids? He got kids, bro. The man probably got like ten kids. Yeah. Probably. But your mama only have I'm really, the five. I'm really lying. I ain't gonna lie. I'm probably getting his ass in trouble. He married. <laughs> oh, damn. You Right now, he getting in trouble. And she don't think she know. Oh, trust me. She know. She know. You married. When you get married, don't you don't you get... If you got other outside kids, don't want the child support hit, the wife know too? Let yeah. me tell you, we had somebody on this show before that daddy had a whole bunch of kids and the wife so-called did not know. Yeah. Mm. So it is possible. It's possible. Well, you, you just gotta, as a wife, you just gotta be on top of that government. That shit gonna come for your ass. Them folks gonna be looking for you too. They want that money, don't they? Want they gonna if they can't get to you, they gonna get to her. Yeah, they trying to get that Medicaid back. Tell me. You can't just keep that Medicaid money. Mm -mm. <laughs> so let's let's talk about the music, man. I you you a producer, a dope producer, man. Shout out to famous Animal TV. Um, that's one of my guys. Uh, I rock with him. Uh, he been yeah, on Boss Talk yeah. One Hundred and One. Like, how did you and Famous Animal TV? Have you been on his show? Yeah, I uh, was crazy. Like, um, <clears throat> I've been on his microphone okay. show that he do now, and I didn't did an interview with him before. Like, he started doing with, all, with early the social on. media. Yeah, like when he was first popping. Like, you know, I'm from Mississippi, so we knowing about bro like he 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 interviewing everybody like we but the thing that was fascinating to us is he going straight to the hood and he's saying it's like well, i'm in the hood i'm he I'm said in, let's go he on all that he was doing that then <laughs> is that nigga doing that in the hood he was doing that then <laughs> like I'm, I'm in your hood come on if i'm on tv lock in i'm in your hood wow. I'm in every hood in america oh god he going he pulling up love that nigga that nigga hard man i love when that nigga come over there the cash he had called me he was like bro famous i'm gonna be here bro i'm gonna give him the bread we're gonna Bring him down here. And uh, my partner Cash, he had paid, and we did an interview, like, on our side of town. Because, like, it was a lot of people in our city that's popular, like, in, in the music that was doing interviews with him. And, like, wasn't nobody doing it from the south side. I'm from the south side. I'm from Wood, too, in Jackson, Mississippi. So we wanted, and, and my partner, he from 500 in the south side. So, like, we wanted to represent the south side. Like, we together, too. We out here, we in the hood, too. So, you know, we doing music, too. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to. We want to show famous animal how how, how Southside looking. And and, he, and how he did was you fuck with us? He he loved it. He like he thought like this. He home. really fuck with all of Jackson. Like you know that's how he 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 found some people to fuck with out there. Oh uh, yeah, he he always going to hustle. That's one good thing about him, man. When he came on here, he put a lot into his show. Mm -hmm. Um, he he travel a lot. He mm -hmm. do a lot for for Memphis. I even seen Moneybag Yo tapped in with him. Man, he a big you know he, he a big motivation. Yeah, and, and Glorilla, Glorilla, like like he's. He how I met her. Say that again. He's how I met Glorilla. That's how you met Glorilla is through him? Yeah, like, like well, it wasn't directly on some personal situation. He had a showcase at one of his studios. Okay. Like, this was like, like I said, still, still all this. Like, he was doing the, the, the microphone thing, but it wasn't just like how it is right now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, he he had his, he probably still do got a studio in Memphis, but uh, he had a studio in Memphis. Uh, this was like probably two years ago down there. And, um... Uh, he had a, like a little showcase with all the art, artists from near surrounding areas to his studio, whether he was from West Memphis or, uh, you know, Mississippi, you know, anywhere you could come. And uh, he had a little lineup. And I work with an artist named Nico. They want okay. Nico. And uh, and another artist named Beck, though, Sam. Okay. So we all, we uh, our whole little crew, LIE, we, we went up there to Memphis. And uh, that's when we met. Well, we seen the girls up there, Quake, Kate Carvin, Lisa, Gloss, Slammer on the all them. We seen all them up there. So, um, they performed, I believe, set the tone too. And shit, like you could just tell they was already popping in the city. And you know, Glorilla was hard, and Kate Carvin was hard. All them girls hard. Did she talk like <laughs> just like that? All, all that was the same. I see. I see that. <laughs> she all, got, all that she got the a deep man. voice, nigga. Like, hey, hey, saying. but hard though. But I love, had, I had love her voice. I, I got the chance to see her before, before that, man, before the So, change. so how was she then? That, like, that, she was just a regular hood. Bitch. But was she doing that same she sound? Was doing the same shit. The same sound. Same shit. Like, same. What was the song that you produced for? Uh, Nut Quick. Nut Quick. Yeah, Nut Quick. Y'all came up with a song, and y'all, how do you come up with a song and say, you know what? I'm gonna call this song. Nut quick. I don't know, like I ain't gonna lie to you. Who came up with the damn song? I ain't hear, I ain't hear she came it. up with that yeah, song. Yeah, yeah. Some nigga. 
The nut you gotta listen to the song. You know what I'm saying? I got to put that on. Look, but but like when she had texted me about the song, she ain't tell me nothing about the name or what she said on it or none of that. She just told me, you know, we got a song, we gonna go up. Da, da, da. This was before she got signed. Was she aggressive about it? She was happy about the song. She even uh, previewed it, like you know. And mind you, like she was popular, but she wasn't CMG at the time. Right. So when she had posted it, my whole city tagging my phone. I'm, I'm in San Antonio. That she was hot like that then. Yeah, yeah. She, she had that buzz early yeah, on, yeah, even like, before FNL. Yeah, like oh, she had she had the the surrounding states and cities that was around her. They was fucking with her too, like especially Mississippi. Like they fuck with her too. She was rocking that hoe. They fuck Nut like quick. Too. That was the time. one. Well, see, like, well, of course, you know, she had F and F come out. It then, came out after or before that. Uh, Nutquick came out when her album dropped that last November. F and F and Tomorrow and Tomorrow Two, all that was out before this song dropped. But we had the song before she dropped. Before she even signed, she already had that song. So how does that work when y'all already had a song that y'all did before she was signed? Well, see, from my perspective, what I understand is she saved that song. Like she had that song on hold. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, when she told me about the song, I'm waiting to see the song drop. But then I see F and F drop. And that hoe went crazy. And then I see tomorrow drop. And that hoe went crazy. And then I see tomorrow two drop. <laughs> Quite a B on that hoe. And then I see her the song with her and got it drop. Ah! And I'm still waiting on this song. You know what I'm saying? So like, you know, I, I was as a producer, that's something that's like a lot of producers don't know. Like when you when you got placements, you can know about the placement, but that shit might not drop to next year. You know what I'm saying? Like, like this shit might not be official until some paperwork done. You know what I'm saying? So she still ain't dropped? Not now. Nah. Uh, and all this, like I said, you think she ever gonna drop? No, nah, she dropped it on the album. The album that she had come out came out this past November. And you got your credits? All that. Yeah. Come on, man. Come <laughs> yeah. on, man. So you got yeah, your credits? Yeah, That's yeah, all yeah, I was yeah. trying to get to. Yeah, you know I got, what I'm I got a writer's I, credit on that song. That's uh, hard, bro. Credit, yeah, yeah. You will hear my as soon as the song come on, you gonna hear my name. Went in on it, hoe. The be hard. Everybody fuck with it. They fuck with it. And you know, my dumb ass, I should have been, man, I'm finna listen to it right now. I'll be damn. I'm finna get this. <laughs> Nut quick. Nigga, you got, you got to find that one. Hold on. I got a question. Go why on are you look looking? for it, because I'm sure. No, why are you looking for that? My, um, my you said that answer. you were in San Antonio in rehab. Mm -hmm. Tell me what happened that landed you in rehab. Um, about like two years ago, right after my son was born, I had uh, got shot. Mm. Now we can't listen to nothing quick. You don't got shot. <laughs> now okay. wait a minute. You now you fifty cent. <laughs> yeah, nigga, we got to talk about this. I really, uh, my wife digs. She, she over there. She already thought about it. She said, "Shit, I got to get this part out of him. Why this nigga won't shut up?" Yeah. <laughs> the man done got shot. Mm. Now I have to stop my research and get in on this right here. Go ahead and ask the question. I'm gonna get in on. <laughs> uh, what what led me to rehab? Um, after I got shot, uh, who shot you? I don't know. You was just at the club. Nah, it's a situation. I don't oh, you can't about talk about it. Nah. You still, you better not be out here getting no trouble, boy. Nah, I ain't I'm not gonna play with you, nigga. I ain't I'm chilling. I'm a yeah, working yeah, man. Nigga. Where, did you, you get, where, where did, did you get shot? Where did you get shot? You got grazed, nigga. My right leg. Nah, it went all the way through. Oh, through okay, your leg. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it went through. So you was good that night. You was out hustling after that. Well, no, nah, I went right out hustling. Like uh, I couldn't walk for about six months. Really? Yeah. Your upper leg, like the bottom? Uh, it, I got shot on my upper thigh. Upper thigh. And it okay. came out my calf muscle. Oh, oh. so it went, it, it was a 22? It went down. Like 45. 45? Mm hmm Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and and you, 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 ah! Nah, it went like that, shit. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's just, no. It's, <laughs> just, it's just like, shit, I ain't gonna lie, when you, when that shit Your adrenaline rushing? You, nah, it wasn't even there. Like, when it go through you, it just, it happens so fast, you don't. You don't think to scream or none of that shit. It just happened like that shit. That bullet shit is like, it's like putting your hand on the on the table and slamming Smash a nail straight through your shit. Like you ain't thinking about saying ah. You yeah. just like oh shit. This shit just went. It through. happened. Like this really happened. Like yeah. Like like cause when it when it, I'm in my mind, my mind just went like oh shit. Did you run? He couldn't I run. Fell. That nigga fell. fell. Yeah, I fell. I couldn't get up. Luckily, this nigga didn't stand over you. Yeah, Yo, you right. No, that's mm -hmm. the real. I'm giving it to you. Here. Real. Nigga, right. stand over you, bro. Yeah, you right. Uh, yeah. So yeah, you right. to be still here, you know, that's a blessing. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, when I got, what, what led me to San Antonio is like after that situation. I, um, so this happened in Dallas? Jackson, Mississippi. Oh, Jackson, Mississippi. Okay, so how did you end up out there now? Uh, this is what I was telling you about Smoke D. Mm -hmm. really. uh, Shout out to Smoke D. That's my guy right there. Yeah. Smoke D is the one that did the second verse on uh, 
front, back, side to side. Smoke D is the one that did, and I'm getting ready to interview him, that's why I'm hype. Smoke D <laughs> is the one that did uh, 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 the Riding Dirty. The whole album he on there, live from the motherfucking pen. This your boy Smoke D. That whole go so hard. Shout out to Bun B. Shout out to UGK. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Smoke D, man. Mm -hmm. R.I.P. Pimp C, man. This mm -hmm. boss talk 101, what a boss is talk. Mm -hmm. Okay, now keep going. But, um, uh, when, 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 when I, after I got shot, I, uh, I got addicted to Percocet. Mm -hmm. So, like, um, like I started off. On the highest one, I, I think. Like I started off, like in the hospital, they gave so they me, gave you the highest one. They gave they gave me something close to it. Okay, but but when I got out in the street, I wasn't waiting on no doctor. You know, I'm young, I'm black, right. I'm insurance. Like I wasn't think about no. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm, you trying I'm, to numb trying all to, that I'm, pain? I'm calling whoever got the the, the whatever gonna the make perks. me feel good right now. Mm -hmm. perks. So whatever gonna make me feel better. Whatever gonna make me feel normal. I can walk around, take care of my son, go to work, all this shit. How old was your son at that time? He was just just born. born. Yeah. Okay. So like, shit got rough for me. You know, with him being just born and all the stuff I had going on. Like, my 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 uh my baby mama had to do more work and then you know what I'm saying. Then I had to figure stuff out. I had mm -hmm. to figure stuff out for myself. That's really kind of when I locked in on the music, though, because I couldn't walk. I couldn't. I couldn't walk like that. And I was before I got shot. I was driving FedEx. I was doing the studio, and I had some other side business that was making me some money. Okay. But but when it happened, I was really relying on the money that I had from that to keep me going for a little while. So I got better, but it just was going faster and faster. More, I kept buying pills. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I. I'm running down two thousand dollars a week on pills. You know what I'm saying? So I uh and I I just was bad on them. Like it, it changed me. Like you blessed to be here. That fitting all could have been in the one of them pills, boy. It was in all them pills. What? It was in all them pills. But they didn't put the wrong consumption in it. I just was fucking with some cool people that know how to press some things right. Wow. So you you know that this is a thing though. Right, yeah, these folks know where, they take. They, so they, they dying, they dropping. Yeah, these folks know they take mm -hmm. fentanyl, and they know if how to. If you this blue, there's no pill or this blue that's a real Percocet. None, none. And they know that. Yeah, these folks know that. They buying blues like these folks out in the street buying these blues. Like they that. taking that chance. I was doing that too. Yeah, taking what, the what, chance. What, what make you take the chance? I wanted to feel normal. But knowing wow, that this could he kill said you, he wanted to feel normal. But knowing that you could die at but any did time. You stop the press. He said, "I wanted to feel normal." And what was normal to you? No pain. But you know that's not normal. Well, yeah, I I, I realized that after I got addicted, but like I just I just didn't realize my mind was stronger than the pills. Like at that time, I, you got to think I ain't never felt this type of pain before. I, I never felt this type of pain before, so. Like when I when I was taking them, it was like okay, shit, I'm feeling cool. I can operate out there. I can do music. I can take care of my baby. I ain't feeling like man, I don't want to move on. I can do everything. Off them Percocet, I'm just being honest. That's real. No, that's real. That's a real situation. Yeah. So I kept and you never thought about the consequences. It went, of it went like I was taking them because I liked them. I, I took them because it kept me moving. So let me ask you a question. So when you had take you were taking Percocets and you were addicted, had anybody around you ever OD'd on it or died from it? That you know enough? Yeah. A lot, a lot of, people. of people. So you know, no, no, that you Jay Pride, one of the best hairstylists, uh, braiders, dread, like she was the truth and she she, she passed away off them Percocet. Was it some so, of the same Percocets that you had been buying blue, from? Yeah. Did, mm -hmm. Some of the same people yeah. that was Nah, yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't know about that. I don't know. Okay. About that. But, but, uh. You know what I'm saying? Like when you're in the same circle, you. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But, but the reason why I ask you that because a lot of times when you see and you know that um, it affects you because you see like, man, I'm on this stuff, but this person that I know died from it. Like sometimes it can register like, man, I can die and leave my child. It hit me sometimes, but once you pop that person, you ain't thinking about that no more. Wow. Mm. wow. So what made you go to rehab? Who made you go to rehab? Uh, Smoke D. It, Sm went, it wasn't even that he said go to rehab, but he knew what I wanted to do. And he pushed it. Like, when I met Smoke D, I was going through probably the worst of my life. Like, getting shot at. I was Smoke D, like, I real did just be the guy into a shooter. I called Smoke D on the phone. Man, this, 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 this just happened. You good, man? You need me to pull up on you? You all right, man? Let's talk. Let me get away from all that bad energy. Pull up on me. And we'll sit there and talk. He'll real deal instill some life into me. 
Like he he'll tell me like, man, you know you you better than this place, and you know what I'm saying you 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 gonna be huge, and you know what I'm saying you you don't need to be here, man. You need to leave, leave now. So like at the time I couldn't just leave, you know what I'm saying. I had my son, I was a little scared at first, but then at the same time it was like I can't do nothing for him if I'm dead. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like nobody was just after me or nothing like that. I just was in a lot of shit. Mm-hmm. So uh. Just being around people I associate with and all that shit. Just, Wrong company. I just it was them perks though. Yeah. You gotta think like I'm on the bitch side. My my don't give a fuck is at a million. You know what I'm saying? I know I'm making music. I know I'm leading the youth and I know people look up to me, but I'm ready to die today. You know what I'm saying? Off these perks. But that's just cause of the influence. Like you realize when you like when you wake up and you realize your influence is, is horrible. Like you, you start to, like when you ask to step away from you, like man, these folks stuck and they really don't know it. So, so like, I told Smoke D that I wanted to move to Dallas. I wanted to pursue music in Dallas. I just wanted to give it a shot. I don't know how it's gonna work, but I just wanted to do it. And Smoke D pushed for it. He he gave me the money to get my plane ticket and everything. He was he was like, you need to go. Smoke like, D you. really really he wanted to help you to get away from the situation and change your life. Even when I got here, he was making phone calls for me, trying to help me get in the studio, everything. Like he was like, when you get there, stick with your plan. Don't do nothing different. And you hadn't gone to rehab at that point yet? Uh well, when I was talking to him, no, nah, I hadn't. But right. but when he when he But once you got to Dallas. No, nah, I actually didn't make it to Dallas first. When he gave okay. me the money for the ticket, I looked for a rehab. Okay. So I found one in San Antonio where mm-hmm. you can go and volunteer yourself in and they'll keep you. So I wanted to be as far as I could be from drugs, being able to call somebody, all that. So I, mm-hmm. I chose San Antonio because it was far. Mm-hmm. So I bought the ticket. I left, went to rehab for like a month and a half, and then they let me out. And when I left out, I had already had a plan in my mind. Like, I'm going to leave. I'm not going to go work no job, none of that. I'm going straight to the studio. And that's exactly what I did. You the came to Dallas? Week, I, I I had the last fifty dollars in my pocket, paid for a Greyhound, came straight to Dallas and got a job that Sunday. How wow. hard was it to um stay clean after coming out of rehab? Super hard. I relapsed. You relapsed. Yeah. Right now I'm five months clean. Man, thank God. Congratulations. For Congratulations, bro. No, yeah. you know, I'm had- happy that you I I'm thinking about the same thing you're about to say. Um Kenny B. Yeah, Kenny B was on here, and he he struggled with the same thing, and I, I pray to God that he hadn't relapsed. Right, I, I, it can I, happen. I know he I know he had the right mindset. He also went to rehab, and he came out on his social media and talked about his struggles and how he tried to kick it and stuff like that. And it made what he said. He made so many people jump in his DM. People who are fighting it currently, and there's one person in particular asked him how. He did it, and he was telling the person, and the next day the person overdosed and Mm. died. But it's just that so many young people and old people are on this stuff. It's really, like for me, you know, it's crazy. I'm 25. I ain't start popping pills until I was 22. So, you know, my entire life, I never thought about taking a pill Mm. until I got shot. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, like I said, my whole reasoning was because I was in pain, but after a while, I was just taking them. Like after a while, I didn't even realize I was in pain. I, I was always high. Like it didn't. I didn't have to take one for a day. I still be that high. You know what I'm saying? Wow. But before the day over with, I gotta pop another one. Wow. I'm just glad that you, glad that you kicked the habit. Five months strong. We are gonna keep you in our prayer. Mm-hmm. We are gonna make sure that we root for you. You got a couple of kids that to be here. You got one here now, and you got one on the way. But you know they always say in order for you to totally kick it, so to say, you have to know what are your triggers. See, I'm gonna tell you, well, well, one of my triggers. Uh, well, back then when I was on them, it used to be somebody could just say something about them, and I instantly, hey, who got them? What hurt? But that that's really what them drugs. Them drugs would do that to you. Mm-hmm. Like they speak to you down there. Like, Damn. but but. Uh, Another thing that used to trigger me was uh, boredom. Like, if I'm in pain and I'm bored, if I'm not busy, I gotta, I gotta be high. I need to be high. So uh, now I'm busier than ever. I don't feel the need to be high. Wow, I, man! I'm gonna go back to the music because 
we definitely uh, going down through there, man. Thank you so much for sharing your story. I know your story is going to bless people. I know it's going to help people. That's one thing. I cut up a lot, but that's something that's serious. As serious can get when it comes down to our youth and the young mm -hmm, kids that come mm -hmm. through here. We've seen these stories. We've heard them. And I think the healing process is through your testimony. You know, it's crazy. You know, a lot of these people think these drugs is like a party thing, you know, and don't even realize how people end up getting in tune. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Like, like the these hospitals. Rap, like, even when rappers rap about them, they ain't saying that they take them because shit. It's a party. It's party time. They they taking this shit because something happened to them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But 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 maybe in the song you thinking, oh shit, this is what I need to be doing to get like him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But no, nah, hell, not nah, that was going. So on. how important is it that you don't talk and uplift something that that could have took you out? It's so hard being in the industry that I'm in. Yeah. Um, I just have to pay attention to what I do. You know what I'm saying? Because, like, I can't control what other people got going on. I care about some of the people that's, that's on these drugs still doing them now. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people that I work with, um, you know, when you're in a place where you're trying to grow and elevate and you're dealing with the right people, some of these people might have been doing the same shit you was doing. You're going to see a change. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I know a couple of my partners that's, I done spoke some of them up in this interview uh, that used to be like that, just like me, you know what I'm saying, probably on something else. You know what I'm saying? But they progressing right now. They doing better in their music They and they off them drugs. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, the the most important part is just realizing that you got a brain, realizing that you grow older and people looking at you. Wow. Do you think, um, do you think keep when you keep talking about it, it helps you to um, stay clean? No. It doesn't? No, I stand busy. Help me stay clean. Wow. Let's talk about, I'm going to get you back to the music. Um, so Nut Quick definitely is the biggest song that you ever created. Right, yeah, right day. now in my life, yeah. And and how I'm competing with that damn song. <laughs> yeah. How, you think you'll ever be able to, to make something bigger? Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, you just got to keep working? Man, this 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 music, man, it, it's, it's like, you know, it took me 10 years to catch this break. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. From, since I just took it serious. So it's like, I never know when that'll happen again, but I enjoy making music, so I don't care. But have have Glorilla reached out to you anymore? Or do y'all? Uh, I mean, I did check your Instagram. She ain't following you on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, she following me, man. You gotta look at my followers, man. <laughs> no, nah, she follow you. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, you play too much. But we, I, I mean, I'm still I'm still sending stuff to a team and stuff like that. That's so, hard. You know, it's 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 definitely should be something coming soon. But really, to be honest with you, man, like. Uh, I'm I'm not like the other producers that kind of getting their feelings about stuff when mm -hmm. stuff don't work out in the future. You know, I I, I believe I have my time with some of everybody. So, uh, whoever's what, supposed to come next, that's that's what God did, brought to me. Did she reach out to you when when she dropped it? Uh, well, her team. Or did she did. text you or did well, she? Well, like when she had the song, yeah, she texted me originally, like let me know that we got this song and this is gonna come out. And oh, stuff. she did like, tell yeah, you that it's gonna come. It's that. coming, nigga. Yeah, it's coming. It's, it's coming. Don't even trip. Even yeah. though I did the deal after you, nigga. <laughs> Uh, I held that song, nigga. It's coming. Don't even trip. I got but it, to put but, that on. But, but when it came, it was really the the most best time. Like, you know, that why I, I believe in God for real. Come on like, now, because, because like, um, honestly, I was probably going through another hard situation in music. Like, I've, this is probably one of the times where you know producers get to a place where they feel like giving up yeah, and all this yeah. type of stuff. Ain't got no hope in it, or you're just looking for some type of achievement uh -huh, out of uh -huh. it. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, when I got that call from um, Interscope, that that that's in my my mind, my heart, everything. You know, you could do it. Yeah, I was like, you know, I'm I'm gonna go harder in the studio. All that I got my own studio now, man. But you know, let's let's talk about let's talk about it, man. Like you and Gator, man. Like, what are you guys? I, I know you and him are, 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 are about to do projects together and everything. How did you link with him? Uh, I was actually about to run into that. It, all this come in with the, with the Glow Realist situation. Really? Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, I was kind of going through a real rough patch. Like, um, the person I was doing business with, he really was envious of me, jealous okay. of me. You know, when I came here to Dallas, I came here with good with good intentions and really, like, business minded. One thing about me as a worker, I don't intend on being your boss. Mm -hmm. So I want to stay to work until I earn my position. So, you know, him, him this person that I was dealing with at the time, him being... Uh, a quote unquote boss, you know what I'm saying? He he looked at how I kind of came in the studio and just took over. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers ain't want to come to him. They don't want to call him for sessions. They don't want to. They want to hear Ariel. Ariel handling all the business. Ariel on, on the beat. 
and making sure shit straight and makes and I'm getting these folks in here. Like I'm I'm working 10, 15 hours in the studio back to back and this ain't one person. This 10, 15 people hour for hour. So like and, and I'm making this man money, but he, he really was envious of me because he he just wasn't the man in the church. He wanted to be the popular guy and the one to make money. He couldn't just be the guy making the money. So he started spreading like, you know, bad words about me and me and him. I just couldn't deal with him no more. God was speaking to me, like telling me I needed to move. And, you know, I was actually scared, you know, knowing that I needed to make a move, but I ended up making it and I lost everything right then. Like, wow. you know what I'm saying? But like I said, believing in God, you know, when you put up against something, all God want to do is he want to see how long you're going to wait on him. Yeah, yeah. So uh, when I was going through all that, one half of my mind is worried, but the other half of my mind is, is just being patient and waiting on him. So, so when I uh, when I when I'm in this situation looking for another studio, that's when the situation with Interscope came across, and I got a partner named Mike B. Shout out to Mike B. He ended up sending me to this producer named Now You Thugging. Uh, now You Thugging used to be one of the most three producers, uh, one of the yellow producers, and all that. So uh, when I linked up with Now You Thugging, uh, me and Now You Thugging was doing business for like a couple of months. And I was just like going in his studio freelancing, but then uh, he had set up an interview with me and this guy named Charlie Mo. Yeah, Charlie Mo. And then, uh, when I went to do the interviews and Gator Man Studio, and that's how we met. Wow, that's heavy, man. Gator Man, one of my favorites, bro. Like, like he been doing this a long time, bro. And uh, you know, when it come down to what he do, uh, he ain't he ain't missed a beat for me. So. Gator, Gator really saved me from a bad situation. You know, you got to think when this song, when this song go really drop, me being a producer and this being my first hit, you know, the first word that's coming out of everybody's mouth is publishing. Yeah. And I ain't know nothing about that shit. And he, he helped you? Well, he got me away from somebody that was going to try to do the most with me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That was going to make it seem like this was going on, but it was in the max benefit for this person. You know what I'm yeah. saying? He kind of seen that in this person's eyes, how they was handling me, how they was trying to set the situations up, you know what I'm saying? And, and like I said, just really kind of trying to run through stuff. Got to just, you know, set me down, talk with me, and put me on the phone with a couple of people, and we've been locked in ever since. Wow, man, that's great, man. I'm so glad to hear that, man. So what's the name of the project that you and Gator are about to do? We actually ain't really just came up with a name with it yet. Yeah, it's we so early. I'm glad. It is, yeah. Yeah, but nigga, but I'm glad. Because when so it come much. out, nigga, I want to be the first nigga that don't. I ain't going to lie to nigga, you. You Gator got my man. number, nigga, don't send me and see what I'm going to cut you off, nigga. <laughs> Gator Man got, 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 Gator Man really got me rapping like a motherfucker. Like, that man hard. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hard. I told like you. I, and you got to think, when I met Gator, my first time ever hearing about him any of this so like without him even having to say nothing people around him telling me who he is they like and you know your manager is such and such i'm like huh they're like yeah you know your manager bro you how the hell let the man you tripping you don't know who got it you don't know who your manager is and that's when i started doing my research and i was like okay you just care alumni he yeah tcas with lucha and i'm damn bro got some shit going on then we started making music together, and then it was just like, he was telling me, I, I showed him some of my old music that I, that I was putting out when I was rapping, when I started rapping, and he was like, man, we gotta we gotta push you as an artist, and, and, and you gotta do more with this music, you gotta be writing for people, you gotta be doing all this. So, Gator really been growing me, business-wise, like me and him, we, we run a studio together now. Like, he been really growing me as a man, like business-wise, just teaching me how to build a foundation. Man, I love that, bro. Like, I always be on these niggas that come on this show. Gator, Gator man doing what you're supposed to do. You know, you're supposed to pull our youth up. That's what it's all about. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The one behind you. I always be like, who who you done pulled up? Don't I do that, but mm -hmm. I ask these niggas, and they can't they can't give me that story right there. Yeah. That's why I rock with Gator man. Yeah. Because I know already, he know what it take. He know what well, it... See, God got a lot of hands on me, you know, but Gator... Gator God put him in the right position for me. Yeah, well, you got Gator. You, I've seen you talk about all these different people yeah. that had opportunity to, 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 you know, water. Yeah, but they, they, you mean, know, yeah. God is the one that grows. Yeah, but one water, one plant, but mm -hmm. God makes the increase. So all this stuff just happening to you, people are just, you know, you just take everything that's good with everything being given and grow yourself into being that that man that you need to be in God, mm -hmm. bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and when I met Gator, like, I wanted him to understand I was a serious guy. Like I said, I got a child, so, 
You know, I don't, I don't, I don't play when it comes to getting that money, and I don't play when it comes to handling business. Like, if it ain't about business, I don't want to deal with it or do nothing towards it. Wow. Top three artists of all time, dead or alive. Oh, really? Top three artists of all time, dead or alive. We have that segment here on Boss Talk 101, and you have to give us any an genre. Any genre. I don't care what genre you pick, but just, just, just top three. Number one. Michael Jackson. Boom. Michael Jackson, the GOAT. Ray Charles. Ray Charles. Mm -hmm. That boy, that bad. Number three. James Brown. Damn. Yeah, hard, well, hard, also. Ass, hard ass, hard ass top three. Hard, hard, nigga. Say, check it, man. So, if, uh, you know, one thing I can say, man, we love you, bro. Like I said, I think this won't be the last interview. Yeah. Uh, you ride with Gator, so you ride with me. Yeah, you know sure. what I'm saying? He know that already. Yeah. You only have to you know, ain't mask one time, it's done. Yeah, I you know. You. So, man, like, I just want to see y'all do whatever y'all can and make sure you keep helping people because that's what you're doing with your, tell your story, man. Yeah. Tell your story on all these podcasts, man. Let people know who you are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Don't hold back because people can learn and, and live through you. Yeah. So a lot of people might be shy to even ask those questions that you answered today on yeah. this show. But because of who you are and because of the way you made yourself vulnerable, it's going to help some people, man. So thank you so much for your story. Thank you. Thank man, you for me. and it's the hardest podcast in the world. So yeah. you good. You made it, bro. Like Appreciate this whole it, yeah. here go hard. You know it. Ain't yeah, nobody yeah, do, do it like yeah. this, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm excited. The whole damn world is in an uproar. Because mm -hmm. guess what, man? A-Ray on Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk, man. Yeah, you feel sure. me? Take it, man. Hey, man. How can people get a hold of you if they're trying to reach out? Uh, follow me on Instagram at A-Ray on the track. You can find me on TikTok at A-Ray on the track one. A R A Y O N T H E T R A C K. That's it. Man, check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. And we out.